What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchpotentials.com back with another SketchUp and Animator tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to animate a turntable animation with an object in SketchUp so that it spins around. And before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to uh, give a start to finish training in SketchUp. So if you wanna take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at thesketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so my example model for this video is the McLaren F1 LM by ZXT. And you can find that just by searching for this in the extension warehouse. And uh, this is a, a larger model, but it looks really good. And so I wanted to bring that in and use that in this animator tutorial. And so the first thing I wanna know is you're gonna wanna make sure you have animator installed. And you're also going to want to make sure you have libfredo installed. So that's uh, just Fredo 6's library of basically scripts that allow the rest of his uh, extensions to work. And so once, once you do that, once you bring this into your model, I've created a little base right here in order to have something for this to rest on. But just generally speaking, this is really all that you need in order to do this. And so to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the clip editor. And so you're gonna click on this button on the very left-hand side for the clip editor. And so when you open up the clip editor, you get all of these different uh, parts and pieces. We've talked about these before. I will link to some other animator tutorials, um, probably up in the corner up here somewhere. But uh, we have start to, or I have start to finish tutorials about animator on this channel. And so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a very simple animation function in order to get this to spin around. And so to start off, I'm going to come over and I'm gonna look for this little blue box that says insert a unit movement. And that's gonna basically add a movement inside your animation so you can animate the movement of an object. And we're just gonna click on new movement. And when we click on this, there's gonna be a few different options up here. If you remember, these are all different options for the kinds of movement. So you can have things scale or explode or follow a path. There's a lot of different things in here. Well, in this case, what we're looking for is we're looking for the spin option. And the reason we want the spin option is because that's gonna basically allow us to spin this object around the center. Um, so you don't want the rotate object because then you have to come in here and try to find the center point. And if you don't get it, things are going to kind of spiral out of control. You don't necessarily want that. So what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to select the option for spin. And when you select spin, it's going to ask you to select an object. And so when you mouse over this, this is going to show you kind of what it's finding inside your model. So you just want to click on this and you want to find the option in here for the highest level group. And in this case, I have grouped my car model and my base model in here together. And so we wanna select the group that contains both of those. And so you can see when I mouse over this one, um, it basically shows a box around all of this. That's the one that we want. And so the way that that's gonna work is that's basically gonna come in here and that's gonna pop up a little rotation icon, kinda like you get when you use the rotate tool over the center of your object. And so then you just want to move your mouse um, so that it's straight up and down. And I believe you can also just click on the Z axis. So that'll just uh, put you in here on your uh, vertical axis. And you can just come in here and click on this point. So then you've set a base point and it's going to ask you, basically it's looking for a base rotation point. And so in this case, you can just kind of click anywhere and then you can either spin your mouse around here to about 360 degrees, or you can just come up in the angle box and click on it and just type 360 degrees and hit the enter key. And when you do that, you can see how you get this little arrow right here indicating that this is gonna spin this 360 degrees. And then once you've done that, you can just come over and click the button for save the sequence and exit. And now, this spin animation got added over here on the left hand side and if you click the play button, that's gonna play. And you can see how our car will now spin around based on that movement that we added. However, it's spinning a little bit fast and so what we wanna do is we wanna slow down our, our spin so that it lasts longer. So to do that, you're gonna come over and you're gonna click on the animation that you created, the, the movement. You're gonna click on that 
and then you're gonna find the box for duration and you can click on this box for duration and you can enter the duration in seconds of how long you want this animation to be in this case I'm gonna type in 10 and I'm gonna hit the enter key and you'll notice how this expands to now indicate that it's 10 seconds long so now if we click the play button this is gonna spin but it's gonna spin a lot slower so you can see how now you really get kind of a good look at your car when it spins around so it's kinda of got the speed in here that we want and so now that we've done that I, I'm pretty happy with the way our animation looks and so I'm gonna go ahead and export this I'm gonna talk about two ways to export this um, one where you just export your animation and one which is a little more advanced which I may talk about on my other channel the rendering essentials as well but just uh, how to export an animation and in this case we're gonna do that in V-Ray and so to start off go ahead and do a file and save your model and you may actually want to click on the save button over here to save all your animation data as well um, just in case something happens and SketchUp hangs up or crashes you'll still have all this information in here and so once you've done that we want to go ahead and we want to export our animation so you're gonna go and find this icon for generate a video for the film and when you click on that that's gonna ask you for a few different things and first of all you need to make sure there should be some if you don't have the plugin that you need in order to uh, create animations it's only going to give you the option for images sequence but I think there's some instructions in here that you can follow in order to uh, install that so I think uh, you have to install an extension called FFmpeg or something like that there should be instructions in here on how to do that once that's installed you can come in here and you can set the basically the video format that you want to export so in my case I'm gonna pick mp4 and then down here you can pick different things for your frame rates your dimensions all of that and uh, you can see how this tells you how many frames it's gonna export and you can also click and create a test image when you create a test image you can see what this is going to look like and um, so I think with the location where it is it's probably gonna be good enough I'm gonna do one more test image and you can go ahead and you can set where you want this video to be created and make sure if you don't want to export all of the images in addition to the mp4 file that you uncheck or unselect this box for images sequence I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click generate video and you can see how this will come in here and this will export all of those different frames and then it'll stitch them together assuming that you have that plugin so we're just gonna let this work for a while All right, so once you get to this point, you can see how um, basically there's some options in here. You can click this button to play your animation that you created. So you can see how here's my SketchUp animation that gets exported. And one thing you might want to think about when creating your turntable is you may want to use a circle with a few more uh, polygons in it. So just to make it a little bit smoother but you can also open the folder where this animation got placed and I don't know why but when I look in that folder it's still creating all the individual images and everything else so I mean those are in there you could probably delete all of those out you don't really need them this also exported this in MOV and MP4 and I thought I unselected those but you can just delete out the ones that you don't want and then just uh, work with the file that you do want all right, and so then the last thing I want to talk about is exporting this to a rendering program. And so Animator supports several different rendering programs. It supports Thea Render, I think the best. Um, it also supports Ambient Occlusion and SketchFX. I think it may support Twilight, and then it has kind of unofficial support for V-Ray. And so I have V-Ray 3.6, and that's loaded on my computer, and you can see how that shows up on this list. So if you have V-Ray 3.6, and uh, you have the newest version of Animator, you can try this. I will note that it can be a little bit, uh, a little bit twitchy, so just be aware, and uh, just kind of be careful. Maybe, maybe uh, don't don't try to generate something with a million frames at first maybe start with something simple just to make sure everything's working but basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna use whatever your V-Ray settings are when it does this so in this case I've come in here and just for the sake of this video I've set my V-Ray settings quality to low um, just because I don't want this to do a whole lot of uh, work on each frame there's 251 frames so that could take a while and then I'm just going to do a quick um, 
I'm just going to do a quick render with V-Ray, and this isn't showing because I hid my dome light. So um, I could talk about this more on my other channel if you guys are interested, but basically I've added basically a dome light with HDRI lighting. And so whenever I render this, and I've come in here and I've just kind of used some basic materials. So I just created some basic kind of plastic materials in here just using, um, just using the quick settings. On the back, I've set my lights to be kind of a glass material as well. And then uh, I've applied just kind of a white plasticky color to the base. And so if I run a quick render on this just to see what it's going to look like, um, you can see how basically this is about what this is going to look like. It's just going to rotate in 360 degrees. And so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to reduce the dimensions of the video in this window right here. So I'm just going to do an 800 by um, 450. And you can see how basically I'm using the render test image setting in order to preview the way this is going to look. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this. I kind of like the way that this looks. And in fact, one other thing I'm going to change really quick is I'm just going to make this base smoother. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to erase out the bottom of this and I'm just going to adjust the number of segments in this to something more like uh, like 60. And then I'll go ahead and push pull that down. About three inches. So now this looks smooth when I do this. So now if I come in here, we'll go ahead We've got all our settings set. We've got our location set. And I'm just gonna name this Rendered Film 1. I'm gonna go ahead and click Generate Video. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna pop up a new version of the V-Ray frame buffer for every single one of these. So you can see how it's coming in here and it's gonna re-render each frame. So this is gonna take a while longer than the last one that we did. So I'm just gonna let this work for a while and then we'll come back and look at our result. All right, so it looks like our animation's done. So if we come in here and we click on this button right here, it's gonna play the animation we created. And you can see how this is a pretty slick, um, good looking rotating car animation. So and like I said, if there's more interest, I may talk about this over on my rendering channel as well. So make sure you check that out at youtube.com slash the rendering essential. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Is this something you're interested in? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.